pray to the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. I welcome you to today's service. I am not home. I'm not in my regular venue and um, I traveled on a missionary assignment. And so I am not in my regular environment. And also you will bear with me. I am not with my um, communion materials right now. So I want you to still get yours ready. I will pray on your own uh, communion materials. And then you take communion. I'll bless your anointing oil and you'll take it. Okay. So I am David Eichbonner and this is David Eichbonner Ministries. For those joining, I've introduced myself and I encourage you to subscribe to the platform on which you are watching it, this video. My channel, David Eichbonner Ministries or David Eichbonner you find me on YouTube, uh, Rumble, BitChute, Odyssey.com, Locals.com, Gab.com, and Brighton. And we are expanding to others. Today, I'm going to be ministering a teaching on the topic, Casting Down Strongholds. We are going to begin with prayer, a time of prayer. I want you to give God thanks that you are alive and well. Thank him that you see this day. Thank him that... He has been merciful to you. We enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. I want you to give him thanks. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Give him thanks. Our God is good. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your love. There is none like unto thee. You are the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. We praise you, Lord. Thank you that we can be in this service today. Thank you that we are able to fellowship with one another, irrespective of distance and location. Lord, we are together in spirit coming together to worship you. Lord, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to thank the Lord for specific events in your life. Those things you know he has done for you, he has done for your loved ones, give him thanks. Give him praise right now. Give him thanks, give him praise. Oh, Father, thank you for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my uh, friends. Thank you for me, my ministry. Thank you for what you are doing through this ministry. Thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, may it be always all about you. Father, reveal Jesus Christ, your son, in us and to us, and through us. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I want you to confess your sins unto the Lord, asking him to forgive you, asking for mercy, that he should cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Do that right now. Talk to him. Talk to him. Ask the Lord to remove bitterness from your heart. Ask him to cleanse you of all bitterness. Father, we just give you praise. We give you thanks for what you have done. Lord, thank you. Forgive our anger, our wrath. Forgive, Lord, the times we have allowed discouragement to weigh us down into depression. Forgive the immoralities, Lord. Forgive the foolish speaking and the sinful thoughts. Lord, have mercy. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Help us to stand, to stand strong. Take bitterness and wrath away from our hearts. Lord, heal us, cleanse us of all bitterness. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. Father, in this service, confirm your word. May your word go forth. 
Confirm your word with signs and wonders. May your name be glorified. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wherever this service is participated in, Lord, may your presence be there. Save, heal, deliver, bless, Lord. Set the captives free. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, I destroy every power operating against this service. Right now, I decree wherever this service is participated in, wherever people come in contact with this service, healings, deliverances take place in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to be teaching on casting down strongholds. Strongholds are things in our minds that we have allowed to dominate us. A person's stronghold, or rather, yes, a person's stronghold is that thought, imagination, or attitude that dominates that person. And a stronghold is of the devil. A stronghold is the devil's um, ground in a person's mind. A stronghold is that reasoning that is not after God. It is the mindset that is not subject to God, but the person has subjected himself to that mindset. It's a, it's a carnal or, or satanic mindset that dominates a person. The Spirit of God does not dominate a person, doesn't force himself upon a person, doesn't imprison a person. And so the Bible has given us instructions on how to deal, to pull down, to cast down the enemy's strongholds in our lives. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So the way you reason is how you become. You are transformed to what is in your mind. Anger, wrath, outbursts of wrath first begin in the mind. If you are fond of recounting past offenses, you keep reminding yourself of past offenses, you keep thinking of past offenses, it will build up an anger that it just takes a little action or inaction from others and then you erupt into a rage. People that are hot-tempered think angry thoughts. People that are sexually immoral think sexually immoral thoughts. So it begins with your mind and then it goes to your actions. So if you want to check what you do, check what you think. If you want to correct your character, begin by correcting your mindset. Cast down that stronghold that Satan is using to manipulate you. A stronghold can be noticed in this way. You can identify a stronghold. A stronghold is that um, is how is that um, attitude that keeps you from rising above the expectation of others. It keeps you from rising above the expectations of others. When people say you can't do it and you tell yourself you can't do it, the stronghold of doubt is active in you. It keeps you from rising above the expectations of others. A stronghold keeps you from living a holy life. It limits your work with God. Saying, look here, don't be too holy, just take things easy, do this, do that, God will have mercy. 
So a stronghold will limit your work with God. Is that attitude that limits your work with God? Well, I can't really be strong. Nobody is strong in my family. I can't be a great preacher because I don't think I can. Nobody has said I can, and so I believe I can't. That's a stronghold. A stronghold is that doctrinal belief that you hold so dear that you are ready to slander and falsely accuse a fellow believer if they come against that stronghold. I give you an example. If you believe that your church denomination are the only ones that have gotten it all right, if somebody were to point out that your church is, is not perfect and you erupt into a rage or you become hostile to that person, the stronghold of self-righteousness is in you. You also have the stronghold of Zionism. Such that if you say, oh, there is a nation that is not perfect, just like every other nation that is not, is not perfect, and they make mistakes here and there which can be corrected, and then you say, ah, don't speak against these people. Don't speak against these people. That's a stronghold of racism. When you, are, when you see believers attacking other believers and calling them anti-Semitic because they have pointed out certain ills that are going on in a place, in a country, their stronghold is racism and Zionism. A stronghold is that sin that you refuse to let go of. Is that pet sin that you refuse to let go of. So you can see from these few examples, a stronghold is whatever aspect of your mind that you have not subjected to the word of God. It's a stronghold. And Satan will use those strongholds to destroy you if you let him. Because as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, 2 Corinthians is in the New Testament, by the way. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. You see that? Strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion. Some other uh, translations will say, Casting down imaginations. So, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. I read up to verse 6. So, the weapons that we use are not physical, they are not of the flesh, they are not carnal, they are not physical. We fight our battle spiritually. But our weapons are spiritual and they are mighty through God for pull, pulling down strongholds. The mind is the battleground. Your spirit gets born again, not your mind. Your spirit is born again. Your mind needs to be renewed with the word of God. That is, your old thoughts need to be cast away and scriptures fill your mind such that you now think from the, from the scriptures. You think in line with the scriptures. Your worldview 
is scriptures. So your mind is renewed by the word of God. Your flesh is subdued. Your flesh has to be subdued, brought into order, into discipline. And so your mind being the battleground is important that is filled with the word of God. When your mind is filled with the word of God, your words, your actions will display the word of God. They will be based and influenced by the word of God. So if your mind is not being renewed with the word of God, you will have, you will behave in a carnal way. If your mind is full of faith, your heart is full of faith, you will speak the word of God to your situation and your situation will adjust itself to the word of God. You see, the dimension of the spirit is higher than the physical dimensions. You have the first dimension. You have the second dimension, which is, can be described as a plane, a, uh, the joining of two points. And then you have the third di dimension, where you have depth. And you have the fourth dimension. Thank God for Dr. Yonggi Cho, who taught us that. You have the fourth dimension, the dimension of the spirit, where we operate by faith. And so the fourth dimension is greater than the first three dimensions. As human beings, we operate in the three dimensions. But when we are born again, we are to operate from the fourth dimension. And the fourth dimension is the dimension of faith. Where you say it, you see it. Where you create a reality based on your faith in God's word. When you see someone sick, you say, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Receive your healing now. The person, contrary to nature, becomes healed. You face situations and you get results that are not expected by nature. Someone without a womb gets pregnant. A womb is formed in, the, in her body and she is pregnant and she gives birth. Someone that had no womb before now has a womb, new one, without surgery. That's the fourth dimension of, of, of faith. That's the fourth dimension, which is the dimension of the spirit and faith. So you are to cast down these imaginations. Cast down those thoughts. Cast down those limitations. I can't do this. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. I can't have enough. You can have not just enough, abundance. I can't make it in life. You can make it in life. Speak God's word. Store up God's word in your heart. And then you cast down those strongholds of the devil in your mind. And things around you, the elements begin to respond to you. Jesus could walk on water because he had the word of God in his mind. And by faith, he walked on water. Faith in the Father. So we exercise faith in God and we see results that are not expected of us, are not expected of us by nature. We get things supernaturally because we have cast down every imagination in our heart that exalts itself, that rebels against the knowledge of God. So, brethren, we are commanded to cast down strongholds. What is that stronghold in your heart? Is it inferiority complex? Is it pride? Is it racism? Is it fear? Whatsoever is in your heart, whatsoever imaginations and opinions that are in rebellion to the word of God, cast them down. I want to pray for you right now. If you are with your communion materials, I'm going to be praying for you. But first, I want those who have not given their life to Jesus Christ, who have not repented of their sins, I want you to do that right now. 
right now. Pray with me. Pray with me. Repeat after me, or you can use your own words. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what the scripture says. Let's go. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. I come to you today. I repent of my sin. I ask that you please forgive me. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Write my name in your book of life. Keep me holy and righteous till the day I meet you. I confess Jesus Christ, your son, as my Lord and, and Savior for eternity. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray that prayer you are born again. I, look, I would love to hear from you. Send me a message. Email me. You can email me on David Igbona Ministries at gmail.com. David Igbona Ministries at gmail.com. Igbona is spelled A I G B O N A. That is A I G B O N A. And then you can send me a message or you call me on WhatsApp or Telegram. The number is plus two three four seven zero three 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 four three six eight plus two three four seven zero three 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 four three six eight so now i'm going to be praying for those of you who are ready to take your communion i apologize i am not in my regular location i am on missionary assignment and so i'm not with my communion materials here i want you to get the bread and the cup Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. On the night you were betrayed, Lord Jesus, you took the cup. You, you said, take, drink. This is my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins in the new covenant. The remission of sins. You took the bread, you gave thanks, you broke it having blessed it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Lord, I pray that every bread lifted unto you and every cup, every drink in the cup, that you turn the bread to the body of Jesus Christ and the cup the contents of the cup to the blood of Jesus Christ. We proclaim the Lord's death till he returns. He has died that we may have life, that we can be reconciled to God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus rose again. And so, Lord, we pray that everything that is of the new covenant of the body and the blood of Jesus will come into us and be at work in us. We, Lord God, we pray that the power of the new covenant will be manifest in our lives. And we pray that all that is missing in our lives, health, body parts, vision, sight, um, peace, finances, we take it now. We take it, we receive it from Jesus Christ, from his body. For you have blessed us with all blessings in Christ Jesus. We receive from Jesus right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. So you take your communion right now. Eat the bread. Take the fruit juice or water. Take it. Or non-alcoholic wine. Then um, while you are doing that, I would 
encourage you to share this video. So as an act of evangelism, please do share it and you can save it on your device. Download it, save it, listen to it again and again and again. And then you also um, feel free to upload it to your own platform. If you have your own channel online, please feel free to do it if you want to. You can subscribe to my channel, David Agbona or David Agbona Ministries on whichever platform you are on. We are just expanding. We are on Brighton. We are on Gab.com. We are on BitChute. We are on ODC.com. If you want to support the ministry, you can use ODC.com. There's a link on ODC.com. Otherwise, you can always send me a message and I will show you how you can be a part of our ministry. And then um, we are on Brighton and locals.com and rumble we are just expanding well on um i connect fx also and on tiktok so you see our crusades our gospel outreaches our revival meetings which we hold uh, periodically you see them you see our activities um in all these channels so now take your oil i want to pray on your oil father i thank you for every oil lifted unto you I pray, Lord God, that you will bless the oil. You will bless this oil. I pray that your power will be at work in the oil. I pray, Lord God, that according to your word, everyone anointed with oil who is sick will be healed. I pray that your protection will be upon all those who are anointed with oil. I pray there shall be breakthroughs and deliverances as they are anointed with this oil. I pray, Lord, for your blessings of favor and protection. I thank you for this oil lifted unto you. And I bless the oil in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry about the lights going out. Um, one of those things. And now, thank you for participating in this service. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. See you again.